All right, folks, welcome. This is episode 337 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller, and just a lot of things to unpack with this back, the back end of the, you know, my scenario of the Atlanta Falcons round four through six when it comes to the draft. Um, I, I don't I don't know where they're gonna go. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think any of us know, but I do have a couple of players that I do want to talk about that I think they're gonna be outright sleepers. And uh, I'm not gonna waste too much of you guys' time on this one. Um, they you know, not too long ago, uh Terry, general manager Terry Fontano and Arthur Smith just had a press conference talking about what they're gonna do in the draft. And to be quite honest, is more of the same. They didn't say too much or nothing, anything out of the way or nothing, you know, headline worthy. So it, it seems like they're going to just, you know, continue to keep the, the you know, the secrets close to them and not try to give out too much and also just uh play it safe. And, and I think that's one of the best things you would like for your GM and coach to do. So we're going to talk about that um, as far as how does that play in what I want, what I think they're going to do in round four through six. If this is your first time here, welcome to the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. Over here, we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. You can check out my latest upload on Georgia Southern football. Cam Ransom entered the transfer portal. What does that mean for the quarterbacks and the team in general? Well, not much, but you can go find out what my total thoughts are on that video whenever you get a chance. Uh, I'm also, you can also find me on YouTube and Rumble if you're listening to me on a video visual side of things audio wise i am on anchor stitcher spotify uh, google and apple podcasts so you guys could check me out on all those uh areas uh also if you want to donate all the links are down in the description all right let's go ahead and get into this let's do a small recap last time i said that i feel like the falcons were probably going to get a playmaker at number eight and uh they're going to trade back and get a quarterback in the first round so um pick 43 and 82 are probably going to be gone if they don't get that receiver i still think they're probably going to go quarterback which what that means is they get the edge rusher at number eight or defensive player at number eight and jump and get a wide receiver at 58 or 74 that's why i feel where carl pickens is probably going to be picked instead of drake london and uh we're just going to go there the quarterback in mind that i said they're going to pick is probably uh desmond ritter and uh I, I'm really interested to see how that's going to play out. Now, what does that mean for uh, pick number 114, 151, 190, and 213? I'm not going to hold you guys up too much on this one. It's not going to be a long podcast. I'm going to be honest with you because it's not much to unpack here. But I really feel that um, 6 and 213 could possibly trade off to move up or just move around. I don't see them doing much on that, but getting the best player available. Um, also at round 5, when they have um, pick 151, um, you're probably looking at a situation here where um, a quarterback could be picked right here. And I've talked about this before. Uh, I think this is is either, either or. I think it's probably going to happen in the fifth round. Carson Strong will probably be picked here for the Falcons. That's my best case scenario. We need a quarterback, everybody. We need a quarterback. You know, don't get me wrong. I think that... Uh, Oh, what's his name? I think Marcus Mariota is going to be fine for the first for the next two years. And um, but with Felipe Franks behind him, we're going to need somebody there. And uh, if we don't pick up a quarterback before then, I don't see us picking up one later on in the sixth round. If we do, I'd be highly surprised. But I think right here is the sweet spot where Carson Strong will get picked. Um, when, when, as far as the fourth round, I think I uh, I'll take I think in the third round I think I said we'll take a run on quarter I mean on uh, running backs so we may get James Cook or um, Hassan Haskins I think that's his name Hassan Haskins out of Michigan at that point and if we don't I, I, if we um, don't I'll be surprised we'll probably go defense but I'm, I'm leaning towards running back right there and like I said the 82nd picker is going to be gone so we may not have another third round pick unless there's some other type of trade going in that we get something in return uh but at 114 if we stay in pat I do see a re another receiver probably getting picked right there um I am thinking about um Christian Watson that could be a possibility but his draft stock is going up so I'm not really sure if that will be the case if Christian Watson to be there he may be gone way before then. But if not, I mean, if he is gone, look at Rondell Robinson. That's another guy that a lot of people have been looking at. I would not be surprised 
if they if, if he will be picked up um that would be something really interesting to see so those are the two guys i'm looking at right there um so we're possibly looking at two receivers right there when you are um the, uh, you're probably looking at two receivers sorry i saw something on my phone uh we're probably looking at two receivers getting picked up. We're probably looking at another receiver, maybe like a, a Carl Pickens in the second round or um and somebody later on. And we're probably or we're probably looking at Drake London in the first round and getting someone later on. Because we're gonna need at least one or two more receivers. Definitely the quarterback at fifth round in the fifth round. I think that's something that we're gonna um really need to look into. And the six round picks, uh, I, I can seriously I can tell you that those those last two picks. They're going to be best player available. Do I have anybody in mind who may still be around? I'm going to be honest. I really don't know. Um, There's a couple of guys that may be hanging out around that time. Uh, Deron Bland is somebody I, that I thought about at one point that possibly be still hanging around around that point. You got a couple of other sleepers that are that could be there as well. Um, I, I You know, it, 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 it could go all over the place, to be honest. You know, I, I'm going to be, you know, just 100 percent up front with you guys. Nobody knows what happens when those guys are actually, you know, be, that's still hanging around at that time. You just don't know. Um, I can throw out another name real quick. Uh, uh, Kobe Bryant, C-O-B-Y Bryant from Cincinnati. You talk about a cornerback from Cincinnati that could be a, a sleeper later on in the late fifth or sixth round. Um, from Cincinnati, six foot one, he could be there. Um, also, you know, you're looking at uh, Kalen Barnes from Baylor. He has a four two speed, cornerback, linebacker Malcolm Rodriguez from Oklahoma State. You know, these are a lot of uh, uh, sleepers that are, that are here. You know, and I know um, CBSSports.com. I remember seeing that a while back. Those some of those names that I saw on there, and I was thinking like, you know, when you're just filling out a roster. And you're looking at best player available. Those are the type of players that'll probably be there. So I, I'm looking at a situation where that might be the move. So I don't have like a mock draft or anything. I'm just looking at scenarios that could that could take place. And like I said, this in this episode and last episode is going to obviously be all over the place. You know, we, I mean, that's just the way it is because I don't like doing mock drafts. I just look at scenarios based on needs and how things could flip and change because nobody really knows what the draft is going to be like. I just looked at the press conference not too long ago with Terry and Arthur. They not even telling what's going to happen. But I know based on what the media has been saying and things that look more ideal, I can see where Drake London or Kevon Thibodeau be done, be picked up at eight. I definitely could see where the quarterback situation could be right there at um number uh, uh moving back into the first round to get a Desmond Ritter. Now I wanted to tell you Carson Strong could be a situation. I, I, I do want to say because that could be confusing as well. Carson Strong could also still be in play if we don't get. You know, I mean, even if we do or don't get Desmond Ritter, so I know your people are gonna be thinking, "Oh, two quarterbacks." Yes, I, I'm saying because Felipe Franks is still the question mark. You know what I mean? So don't be surprised if something like that may happen. You know, seriously, you just don't know. So, and then when you look at if Thibodeau or Drake London, that opens up a whole world of things with the number fifty eight pick. Um, let me see. I want to make sure that's right. Uh, I think I said fifty eighth pick. I want to make sure I said the right. I think it is 58th pick. You you just don't know what may happen. Yeah, 58th pick. You just don't know what may happen if the receiver is not picked up right there. If they're not picking up a receiver at number eight, then you're probably looking at one at 58. So that that that's where that comes in. So you're looking at edge rusher, quarterback, and a receiver. Turn back in the third round, get a running back. You're not going to have that second, third round pick if you go up and get uh, a Desmond Ritter. Fourth round, you're probably right there. You're, you're probably going to be looking at maybe another um, receiver or possibly a safety. You know, you just don't know. And in and, and, and the fifth round, I think that's where you could possibly get Carson Strong. And you can interchange those with the 114 to 151 pick. Sixth round, those are toss-ups. And the names I named earlier could possibly be there. So um, I, I, I think that's just where we are at the point when it comes to this this draft. I don't, I don't see anywhere else where you can go. I think those are solid moves either way. And the thing about it, 
we're in a situation where all these moves could be solid. I know some people were talking about actually getting offensive linemen. Hey, th that's not out of the question either. But if that happens, that blows up everything that I just talked about because I don't know where we're going after that. If we get an offensive lineman at number eight, if we get an offensive lineman at, in the third round, what does that mean for running back if we do that? You know, it, it's so much going on that we just don't know what may happen. You know, uh, what happens if they go cornerback? You know, but I, the way I, the, the, one of the reasons why I say we're going to go offense first, probably the first two rounds, you know, first two picks, because this is a, this is a offensive driven league. And I feel like the Falcons want to get as much firepower on offense as possible. So, um, and the fill-ins that we got on defense are just that for right now. These guys on prove it deals that probably could be long-term, you know, so I'm not saying it won't happen on defense. But I know where the, the where the league is going, where where it's already been, is offensive laden. So I wouldn't be surprised if the offense is um getting more giving more care than we think when it comes to this draft. A couple of receivers, a running back, a quarterback, and then you never know what kind of wild card player you may get in the sixth round. That that's just the way it's gonna be, in my opinion. Uh so I don't know what you guys think. I don't like I said, this is gonna be a little bit shorter than usual. Tomorrow in the next episode, I'll probably go more in depth on why these scenarios are possible and what things what things can look like down the road. And on uh later on in the week, you know, the draft starts. Uh, and I'll give you my commentary and opinion on all that, as well as the stuff with Georgia Southern, because a lot of things are moving on both ends when it comes to Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons right now. That transfer portal thing is a really it's a big deal. But with us having quarterback security, maybe not so much, but we'll get into that later. If you like this commentary, if you like this podcast, hit the like button, share this commentary, share this podcast, subscribe to the YouTube or Rumble channels if you haven't already. Also subscribe to the podcast on the podcast avenues if you like Google, um, uh, Google, Spotify, Anchor, to, uh, Stitcher, uh, Apple, and um, or what else is I'm on? Spotify. Yeah, I'm on Spotify as well. I'm all over the place. Find your way over there and go ahead and subscribe. So if anything happens to one of these platforms, you'll be able to listen to it on the audio side and vice versa. So that'd be a really good look to do either way. Oh, uh, other than that, man, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited about what's going on here. You know, whether it be Georgia Southern, whether it be Atlanta Falcons, you know, see my Atlanta Falcons hat right there. You know, whether it be either, any one of those, it's just an exciting time right now. And I think with this, uh, with these guys right here, I don't think they did too bad last year in the draft. And I think they're going to be in a better position to do even better because other positions have been freed up because of other free agent signings and trades. So we'll see how that plays out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the rest of your uh, day. Have a blessed Wednesday. Um, it is almost time for the draft. It's going to be pretty awesome, huh? I think so. All right, y'all. Y'all take it easy. Y'all be blessed. Peace.